Hey, legends. Welcome to the Virtus Performance Podcast. Uh, Coop says hi. We're sitting at week, what are we up to? Week 49 uh, this week, episode 49. We are getting ever so closer to the goal of 52 podcasts in a row. Uh, So if you guys are enjoying the podcast and you want it to keep going, please let us know. If you hate it and are sick of it and want me to stop talking, then please let me know. And then, uh, yeah, I guess I'll tally it up, take it to a vote and see what happens. Um, Today's podcast, I sat down with Josh Kaiser. Uh, Some of you guys might know Josh. He is a member of the Virtus family. He is a former triathlete, uh, someone who has dealt with a fair bit of adversity and someone who has has polarized a lot of opinions in the past. And I mean that... uh, in the nicest possible way, Josh and I have not always seen eye to eye and haven't always agreed on things. Uh, we talked about why and talked about how that's progressed and changed and how his mindset and how his values have progressed and changed and improved and things like that over the last couple of years. So really interesting chat. Uh, we talked about his achievements, talked about his his failures and, and talked about uh, all his change in mindset. So if you have been enjoying the podcast, uh, I would really appreciate if you could share it, if you could subscribe, uh, if you could pump it up to your friends and family. Uh, if you haven't been enjoying it, please send it to the people you hate and let them listen to it. Enjoy. My personal and business goal is to be just a little bit better every day. I believe everyone, especially normal people, have a story to tell. The Virtus Podcast exists to help us all find small ways of consistent improvement by discussing the journey and experiences of each of our guests. Josh Kaiser, mate, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's, uh, it's good to have you in. Yeah, I'm actually uh, pretty excited to do something like this. Excited actually. or nervous? Well, we were talking about just, <laughs> we were talking about nerves, but now I'm actually probably more excited than anything. Good. I good. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, first question for you, what gets you out of bed in the morning? A little bit cliche, because uh, it's more or less what Virtus bases everything on, but um, Probably a year ago would have been a lot different, would have been, wouldn't have been able to answer that question at all. Now, it's pretty much just to improve from where I was yesterday, and that's, that's pretty much what I base every morning on, doing the, doing the small things right and then getting to work. Talk to me about like your mindset, I guess the difference in your mindset from now and a year ago. Like It's a pretty, it's pretty good self-reflection to be able to say, I wouldn't have been able to answer this 12 months ago. Mm-hmm. Why? Um, I had a lot of self-pity probably a year ago. Um, the world was against me kind of attitude and yeah. it just generally wasn't I was just sort of struggling to find my my place where I fit in um, with a lot of small things going wrong that really are small things and back then I thought they were massive Yeah. and I had no genuine direction sure I had goals and all that kind of stuff but never really committed to those goals and sort of just stumbled and that just usually spiraled out of control most of the time in comparison to now, I actually enjoy the small failures. Big failures still sting, yep. but I just turn them into smaller ones and sort of work through it. So, which I'm sure we'll touch on some of the some of the failures. Yeah, but. definitely. <laughs> like, what's <clears throat> what do you think are the main drivers for that change in perspective? How have you gotten from where you were to where you are now? It's probably more family orientated than anything. Yeah, in all honesty seeing certain people in my family sort of have things go wrong and deal with it absolutely terribly and put the blame on everybody else when it's in reality it's all you can do is control your life definitely you, re- you really can't put your life on others sure yeah. you can get guidance yeah but guidance is nothing without you sort of taking it on board and moving forward has it been a gradual <clears throat> realization or gradual gradual change to realize that like you're in charge of your life and for that ability to actually kind of go you know what I'm going to stop with the self pity I'm going to stop with the with feeling sorry for myself and feeling like I'm the center of everything and 
and move towards that that feeling of or having perspective and understanding that it's not all about you um i think the frustrating part about it is i've always known but i've never sort of did anything about it yeah i've just always felt it was easy just a sook yeah which to put it bluntly i was definitely a sook back in the day yeah um but yeah, it was definitely definitely a gradual change. I, I couldn't change in a day, and I sort of just chose a couple of things about myself, and until they were right, I wouldn't move on to the next thing. Yeah. Because every time that I've tried to sort of change who I am as a person or where I want to go, I've tried to do it all at once. Cold turkey never works, and you just <laughs> end up back at square one. Yeah. So I decided to just deal with the fact that I've got flaws and pick one or two at a time. Well, you're not alone in that aspect. Yeah, well... <laughs> Everybody's got flaws. 100%, mate. 100%. Everybody's got flaws. Um, but even even other people with flaws, they respect them and they they know about them. Yep. Whereas I knew about them and didn't care. It was just... Yeah, was it didn't care because you thought you had no control over them or was it didn't yeah. care? Yeah. I, I felt as though I had pretty poor control over it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what have the... Like, what have the... I'm trying to think of how to ask this question. What have been the, the tools or the things that or the people in your life that have helped you find those find those little wins and the importance of the little failures and actually be able to take a step forward to go, you know what, I do have this control. I think my dad, massively. Awesome. Um, dad and I were never really all that close growing up. Yep. Um, he was of the old school era of he provides the food, he provides the bills, yep. he pays the bills. Yep. Um, and that's sort of his extent to his input. Um, now that I'm older, more independent, blah, 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 yep. um, I sort of opened up to him a lot more and he sort of finally put the pencil down and said, okay, yeah, I'm happy, happy to chat. That's good. Um, which is cool, which is cool. Um, yeah. He's still not all that emotional, definitely, quite yeah. truly. Um, he's very tusky and I've only ever seen him cry once in my entire life. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he's willing to be there, help, he definitely doesn't get handouts, not yeah. at all. And I think that's why I res- respect it so much. Cause yeah. We've all got debt and all that kind of stuff. I was young and dumb and racked it up. Yeah. And he never really said, all right, I'll pay it. Um, but he's helped here and there. He's been, been paid there it back in for you. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, was it like, <clears throat> I guess, growing up and having um, and having that father figure who wasn't necessarily as emotional, was it something that you were you struggled with or was it? I, I don't think I ever comprehended it yeah. until I was older. Yeah. Um, mainly when I started putting self pity aside, because I don't think I blame my dad for self pity. Yeah. I did, I probably there's nothing really to blame. It was just sort of is what it was. Well, I think if you were still in that self pity, you'd try and find someone to blame, right? Well, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. But looking back, there there is no one to blame beside yourself, and there's no real reason it happened. Yeah. Um, I can list a whole bunch of bad things that happened in my life, but they're all sort of irrelevant. I just dealt with them poorly, in my opinion. And when I was younger, my mum was definitely a massive support. And as soon as I sort of gained independence, that's when that was sort of a turning point. And then I had to leave home to sort of repair that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Uh, <clears throat> in terms of, I guess, that, that switch or that change in mentality, was there one specific moment that you remember or one turning point or one event that kind of you went you know what I'm I'm done feeling sorry for myself Whoa. that's a good question and if it's not that's okay that's a good question actually yes yeah leading so as you know I used to do triathlon um, leading yep. into one of probably the biggest races of my life mm. um, in regards to triathlon four weeks out I got injured yeah. and couldn't come back from it. Um, pulled out of World Champs. Yeah. And that's when I sort of spiraled even worse. Yeah. Had everyone, had life, quit triathlon, put all the shit in the shed and gave up. Yeah. Um, it's probably four or five months of doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. Didn't rehab, didn't try and fix my knee, didn't, didn't want to talk to anyone. Sort of just working my day half assed And then just I realized- Just going through the motions. Yeah, just going through the motions, waking up, going to sleep. Yeah. Um, eating just rubbish, spending all my money. Um, yeah. Probably four or five months worth of that. And then I sort of looked at what I'd achieved in the past four or five months. Yep. And for lack of better, for lack of better words, it was absolutely fuck all. Fuck all, yeah. Absolutely fuck all. Um, and that just instantly changed me. 
which would lead him to the swim, which, so that, that moment, the fact that I was training, committing to training, doing reasonably well, I was on no elite form, yep. but I was reasonably high in the age group. Yep. Um, from that, let's call it success, to doing absolutely nothing, that was probably the turning point. Yep. Because I was to blame for my injuries, absolutely, 100%. Never respected the body. How would you have gone <clears throat> if you if uh, past Josh could talk to talk to present Josh? Yeah. How would you approach that conversation of trying to tell your present or your past self to settle down? How would that conversation? Look? Um. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Stumped. <laughs> Probably along the lines of you really don't need to talk as much as you do. Yeah. Just take a step back and sort of take things in instead of having an opinion. So, because in reality, I don't, my opinions really aren't all that valid, especially in training. Well, that's the wonderful them. thing about opinions. None of them really are. <laughs> True. But you, you hire a coach because yep. their opinion is of a more educated than yours. Definitely. Simple as that. Yeah. And I would always sort of push back and too hard and all this kind of crap. Yep. So I'd probably just tell myself to take a step back and just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get into your, co- your training and your, um, and your swim and triathlon and what kind of went from there in a little bit but talk me through your triathlon career how did you how did you get into triathlon how did you get started what, um, age, what age did you start started at 19 and a half I think yep um, how old are you now 24 yep and I started you obviously know Paul Marchant mm-hmm. um, he was a shout out a shout out <laughs> <laughs> classic um, he was at Pelican Park and that's where I used to swim teach yep. coach um, he was went to my school ended up just having a chat whilst I was there ended up swimming yeah um, and got talking and he did triathlon I was like yeah I'll give it a shot so I did one triathlon just, just for funsies and yep. went out and bought a bike and all of a sudden you know, your world is triathlon yeah <laughs> so that's sort of how that progressed and then went, ended up joining a team on the on the Moitra Peninsula um and yeah, just keep building from there. Ended up on the elite sponsor team for that that um, that company. So you were decent. Um, I was above average. I'd call yep. it. Like I said, in no no means I was elite. Yeah. Probably had the elitist attitude. <laughs> as soon as you get reasonably good at something, you think you're shit hot. But yep. in reality, nah. <laughs> like I like I made worlds. Yeah. But either way, it's not that hard to make worlds. Like you got a top three in your age group, and yeah, I think it's, mate, it's it's still a pretty decent achievement. Yeah, like stoked. Yeah, don't get me wrong, but yeah. it's unpaid. It's, it's yeah, like the definition of a lead is you're you're a paid athlete. Yeah, fair, good, good. So talk me through that. I guess that progression from being 19, 19 years old, starting triathlon to to making worlds. What was the progression like? Was it quick? Was it fast? Was it just, um, just rising through the ranks or? Was it hard? Well, what I qualified for was half Ironman, 70.3 worlds. Yeah. And I qualified on my second race. Yeah. So the progression of going into half, that was quick. Yeah. But I've been doing it for two or three years. Yeah. But it kind of shows that you're either exceptional, you're elite, and that's when things become hard. Yeah. Or you've got people that would, I would say, have some form of natural ability. And I could already swim, I could already cycle, I could already run. Yeah. To me, those three things aren't difficult. And swimming is the one, the biggest one that sort of got me through. Yeah. Um, a lot of people struggle in the pool. Yeah. Swimming isn't a natural thing. Yeah. Most and people can sit on a bike and tickle legs over. Exactly. Most people can run. Exactly. Yeah. At a, at a reasonable pace. Yeah. But there's a lot of, like, for example, for swimming, I would be probably top three, well, I was top three for every race for yep. swimming out of the water. And there would be a game of who can who can hang on who can longest. catch up. Yeah. Um, so I always sort of had a head start, and we're talking anywhere between two and five minutes out of the water, like from uh, Ballarat. I swam twenty six minutes. Yeah. But your fourth place get, getting out of the water in like 31, 32 minutes. Yeah. Like so it's you're, huge. So well ahead. It's, yeah. and that that's no special ability. It's just the fact that I can swim. Can swim. Yeah. Um. 
did, so did being really <clears throat> did being really good at swimming kind of give you a uh, I guess a false sense of security and a false sense of uh, how good you were um without that necess- like no I, guess- I always sort of had a bit of doubt yeah that I was not ready to race ever yeah and I never fully committed to a race and I think that's one thing that kind of shits me yeah I never never gave 100 percent yeah um, I've only ever had one race where I was like yeah I, I did well I'm stoked I went hard from start to finish yeah um, which is kind of disappointing in four years of racing or yeah because <laughs> yeah, I guess there'd be a lot of people who you'd be competing against and probably beating that'd just be busting their balls e- exactly week in week out exactly um, and I would always half ass training there'd be a few sessions that I absolutely loved um, and would always just go balls out and yep. the rest of us would pull out early if I could do you regret that mindset now, looking back on it? Um, I do. I regret that more the attitude yep. towards training because yep. it set me up for failure in yep. other things. Um, but at the same time, if I had have gone harder in triathlon or committed more to triathlon, I don't think that lifestyle is where I'd want to be right now anyway. Cool. So, so it happened I, for a reason in, yeah, in, I think in so. a way. Yeah. I think my half-assed attitude sort of happened for a reason. It's not a lifestyle that I enjoyed because yeah. it would be work and train. You train for three sports, it consumes <laughs> your life. Yeah. So yeah. it's much easier to train for one sport and have a couple of days off. Yeah. Five days training, two days off. It's great. Definitely. Triathlon, you really don't have a day off. Yeah, because you're always moving to the other yeah. thing. Like, that was just something that talking to... <clears throat> Um, so when we both know Mark Simpson in the podcast like having that having that conversation <laughs> for those uh, listening at home Josh brought me a coffee but it was a soy mocha which C- is courtesy the, of Dylan the, yeah courtesy of Dylan from Comfort which is the worst coffee <laughs> in the world except for a dirty chai anyway um, talking to Mark Mark Simpson about that I kind of like as a coach you have a really good idea of of what your athletes go through and Mark's amazing to yeah. listen to and and to hear it from his point of view as a coach slash athlete uh, slash business owner and yeah. just how much time he was putting into um, triathlon and, uh, and anyone who gets to that level would all be the same it's it's more than a part time job like yeah. it's a complete lifestyle change and something that yeah. needs to be you need to be kind of all in or all or, yeah. or you'll end up failing or f- like falling out of love with it like like I guess you did yeah. um, so after that four, four to five months of of nothing what was the what was the driver to get yourself moving and get your body moving again because obviously you had that knee injury and you hadn't done much rehab and yeah. you hadn't done the things you needed to do or something that's or s- done the things that someone who was fully committed would have done mm. what was your kind of next steps from there um, I, d- I definitely tried to get back four worlds yeah but four weeks out was when I had to pull the pin yep. I wouldn't have been able to erase off the training that I'd done yeah um, so I sort of did the right rehabs up until then yeah and then I just gave up getting out of it yeah it took a lot of effort um, and I like I like knowing the fact that I did it so like getting out of it I think yeah. that's what I sort of pride myself quite highly on the fact that I did it by myself yeah um, but give, set, give me, give me a sense goal. of the timeline when when was Worlds meant to be September yeah yeah and then you had and then so how long where are we now <laughs> I can't even remember the date so, well, that, that so was Worlds was meant to be in September 2016 yeah yeah so what, yeah, 2016. Eight, eight months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then by probably Feb, I was starting to sort of find the wheels again. So yeah. two months in the lead up to that, I sort of started getting back in the pool. Yeah. Just to try and escape get the world, in. get yeah. moving. Um, and I, th- I can't even remember when I officially signed up for my swim. I had to um, send in an application sort of thing to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, and that took a little bit of stuffing around. Yeah. For, um, for everyone that doesn't know, fill us in on the swim. What's the, uh, why did you decide to do it? What is it? And, and what was the process like to act, just enter? Um, which, where do I start with, with those questions? <laughs> start with what is it? Um, so it's called MS Mega Swim. Normally teams, I've done it for four years. Normally you get together with 14 other people. So you've got teams of 15. Yeah. 
Um, you'll jump at the jump in the pool at midday on a Saturday and finish swimming at midday on Sunday. So you yep. just tag team however long you want to swim. So you might swim 400 meters, tag team to your next person, or you might even do an hour stint or something like some people. Um, done it for four years and you never really gained traction in regards to raising funds. Yeah. Because yes, it sounds like a cool achievement and it sounds like a lot of time, but 15 people sort of, yeah, it's achievable. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I decided to sort of take a different tact and just do it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yourself in a pool swimming laps for 24 hours. Yeah. So I did it at Park in Frankston. Yep. Um, again, jumped in Saturday, yep. midday. Um, had a all mapped out. Um, had quite a few people on my side. Yep. Talk, talk um, me through the process to get there before yeah. we go to the actual <laughs> yeah, race. Because that was... Because it was a long process. Yeah. Yeah. And... <clears throat> And I guess we spoke about this a little bit before the podcast, but your I think when you came, like you you, you told us you were going, you're thinking about doing it, and then you told us you were doing it, and then you told us it was a thing, and then like you were getting rock, you were getting rolling with it, yeah. um, and you obviously asked asked for help and support and things like that, and we we're ha- yeah. and like we we're happy to support you, but it was really interesting, like talking to you now compared to talking to you back then when you were thinking about it. Mm. Um, like I see you as a completely different person yeah. like from my point of view as a coach yeah. because I saw you as someone and like I'm sure you'd probably agree in certain aspects of someone that wasn't ready to take people's advice yeah and so when so when you asked me I remember you asked me if you thought if I thought you could do it and like I said yes because of course I thought you could do it but I was doubting your ability to listen to the people that you needed to listen to mm. what was that process like it was tough <laughs> it was yeah. tough I really, really had to pull my ego aside. Yeah. Um, and rule five, mate. Rule five. I haven't read your board for a while. Oh, mate. Rule five. Versus bring your ego in. Put your ego on the yeah. hook. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's good because I've seen you, seen you, seen that progress and that process of you actually doing that. So yeah. Talk me through the mindset of going. You know what? I need to put my ego aside for this. So you asked what made me do this swim. Yep. A few reasons. Yep. Some selfish reasons. Um, which I'll talk about nothing wrong with selfish reasons Um, one of the unselfish reasons was I was working at a cafe Um, long story short there was a gentleman that came in every single day somewhat able bodied when he came in had a bit of a gimpy limp Um, and by the time I was actually leaving he was on a walking frame and could hardly even stand would need help getting getting seated Um, but he would come every every single day and when I was leaving I I teared up a tiny bit saying it's see you around but in reality probably not yeah because in the one and a half years he he regress regressed significantly. really badly so, um, so that, that MS Megasin sort of obviously multiple, multiple sclerosis exactly right yeah. and so I found out probably midway through that he had MS yeah um, and it really struck a chord the fact that how fast he regressed if that was my dad I'd be shattered yeah I'd be shattered if it was anyone in my family I'd be shattered yeah um, and that's what sort of kick started doing the, the mega swims um, and I chose the mega swim because that was probably the only one my body could handle. Yep. If I wanted to run a long distance, no chance. If I wanted to lift a lot of weight, no chance. All that kind of stuff. Sure, I could shave my head, <laughs> but everybody shaves their head. Yeah. Um, changing my mindset going into it. Yeah. Like from that huge. from that athlete who was very um, very stubborn and unable to take criticism and advice to, yeah. to someone who. So is able lead, to. Le- leading into all of my sports, I've always had some form of natural ability that I could just do it yep. but I haven't necessarily done it right yep. um, for example I could run, run long distance and I could do it reasonably quick but my body would die straight after and we all know why instabilities all of that kind of stuff yep. um, the selfish reasons for doing the swim are exactly that to sort of take the back seat I gave myself six months which is a fairly long campaign yep. um, but I set a massive challenge that put fear into me basically the reason I chose that was my original decision was it's unachievable but enter anyway okay so you when you first entered you didn't think you'd be able to do it no and that's why I did it because I needed to reset how I thought yeah reset who I listened to reset how I listen um and the only way that I would even get to the start line was doing exactly that was just take the back seat and just take your time. So yep. I gave myself six months. Yep. Um, I sent him my application. You just have to sort of tell him that you, 
you can swim. Um, <laughs> tell them past past results that you you have gone through your lessons, all that kind of yeah. stuff, and um, they would give you a phone call and sort of discuss why you're doing it, how, if how I'm going to do it. In reality, I yeah. bullshitted most of that. Yeah. Um, because. I don't know, I swim 24 hours. Like, <laughs> swim for an hour, yeah. this piece of piss, but yeah. the time's 24 hours. Like, it's a long time. Completely different kettle of fish. Um, and then from there, I got accepted, which was cool. Yeah. Um, and then probably took me two or three weeks to get in the pool. Yeah. So even from day one, it was a battle Yeah. to reset what I do. Like, I've just entered a 24 hour swim, I've given myself six months. How am I even getting in the pool? Like, yeah. What am I doing in my life? It's, it's an interesting, interesting. What those couple of weeks where you didn't get in the pool? What was your mindset like? Was it like a like every footballer preseason? Like I've got to get get for a run, but then you get three days in, you haven't done a run. Five days in, you haven't done a run, and then you finally do it. Exactly. Is, it's is a, that it's the mindset. Serious case of I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. And we've all been there. I'll we've start all, on Monday. We've all been there. Exactly start right. It's like a diet. Yeah. I'll start on Monday. Yeah. Because you said I'll start on Monday. You miss the Monday, and I'll start on Monday. There yeah. you go. It's a week. Yeah. Um, got in the pool um, and then slowly actually started putting some laps together Yeah. decided that a coach is probably a good idea mm-hmm. um, I was already coaching for Hurricane Swim Squad yep. um, and the coach that was in place then um, Nathan Taylor he um, wanted to take on the challenge awesome. he, he thought it was achievable yep. providing I put in the work and yep. um, my training was definitely hindered, but I worked up to some pretty good sessions. And looking back, I'm really proud of myself for, for some of the things I actually did in, in training. Yeah. Um, which brings me back to the selfish reasons. So this is one of them. Um, I've always been afraid of being alone, but okay. I absolutely love it. So yeah, being good. in the water, you can't hear anything. Yeah. You can't just pull off and look at the trees. You look yeah. at the ground... <laughs> Lap you're, on lap. you're stuck in your head. Basically. You're stuck in your head, and yeah, and essentially have to force yourself to just shut up. Yeah. So now I'm really good at just, I don't know, phasing out, but in a good way. I think just being at peace, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that was the biggest reason. So just forgetting what what's happening in the world and just yep. enjoying the fact that you're and just, just having to worry about. Long. Kicking the legs and swinging your arms around and exactly stay, right. staying floating. And by the time you're done, you don't even you're 100% autonomous. You're just yeah. doing the movements, and you are in a different world. And that, that was that was a huge part of it. Just teach myself it's okay to be alone. Yeah, I like that. That's important because, um, like, it's something that I've explored a little bit over the last I don't know, six months. Like traveling by myself for a while and. <laughs> And going on a trip purely, like three, like two days purely for that solitude of being by myself. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a tool that we can use to kind of reset ourselves and center ourselves yeah. and get out of our bubble and just be without, mm. the, like, without our own inner monologue telling us that we have to do something or we have to be something or we have to look look like something or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then we get rid of the external monologue as well, and we're just us. Um, how do you, how have you? Like we'll go back to you swimming in a second, but how have you adopted that being alone into, I guess, this, like your new mindset? Um, I think the biggest thing is me being okay with being alone has told me to be, oh, as essentially made me being okay with walking away yep. from things. Yep. Um, cause I, I used to struggle. I always loved a good argument. <laughs> Just for, just for the sake of it just just for fun just yeah. no idea why it was just an absolute shit attitude yeah um, but me being okay with being alone meant me being okay with walking away and not worrying and not thinking oh, I should have said this should have said that yeah I can just walk away and be alone and it doesn't matter and it just doesn't matter so yeah. a lot of relationships are better now because of yeah. that um, still sneaks in the other occasion yeah I'll, I'll have to die harder yeah I, I think um like that, like even the most disciplined people in the world are still going to want to, like, take that easy option sometimes. So I think it's exactly really important right. to be mindful of that. That's where you were. You don't want to forget it because you like it's been a big learning experience in your life. Mm. But you want to be able to go. All right, that's where I was. That's where I don't want to get back to. Yeah. This is where I am now. Here are the things I do. Mm. Uh, do you practice practice mindfulness and meditate and things like that? Uh, no, I. 
go back to my swim. Cool. I, I think that's really centered me. Yeah, that's awesome. Really centered me. The fact that I'm okay swimming at midnight <laughs> means I'm okay doing dealing with something in the world. Yeah. So I don't know. I, in my mind, it's a really, really cool achievement for a million different reasons. Yeah, mate, it's an amazing achievement. How many? So you ended up. Talk me, talk me through. I don't want to get to the swim yet. Talk me through the support leading up to the swim. Amazing. Like you obviously Amazing. had a huge, I guess, huge community. Like lots of people in the community got around you and yep. supported you in what you were doing. And a huge um, amount of people didn't. Yeah. A huge amount of people didn't believe I'd do it. Yeah. Does not surprise me. Yeah. With, with my past, I knew there'd be plenty of people saying, yeah, you're not going to do it. Yeah. Do you blame them? No, not at all. Yeah. Cool. So, well, we just, we had a chat before this even started and yeah. you wouldn't have coached me, so. No, <laughs> no, because I, like, I wouldn't have coached you because I wouldn't have thought you would listen. Yeah. I think the big thing, like, for any athlete, for any person who wants to be coached or wants to get somewhere, you need to put your, your full faith and, like, ego on a hook, mm-hmm. like, you need to take out that narcissism and just let your... Like you, like I said before, you hire a coach or you hire someone because they're good at what they do mm. and you need to allow them to do that. And I think if I tried to coach you then or um, like, or if you tried to like train with any of us at Virtus, we would have had a really real struggle trying to get you get you to do the things that we knew you needed to do. Mm. And like that's a process that you've gone through and figured out that and now you're aware of it mm. and now you've put yourself in a position where I would and am happily going to like happy to coach you now because I know you'll listen mm. um, and I know you'll you'll use those learnings of the past to to help yourself get to where you want to get to yeah which is really important huge impact was actually Jesse Bice as well yeah shout Threw out it. Bice it. yeah Bice it. Um he always expressed his disappointment and I think that really hits home Yeah, stumbling through something what I was doing um, if I half asked anything he'd be like mate what's what the point what, what are you doing like, yeah, cause you're just wasting everyone's time exactly um, even though he's getting paid he genuinely cared and he he was one of the really really good people throughout the process good um, he looked after my shoulders um, along with many other people like shout out <laughs> noon times in a second so you go yeah Ash Law um Greg Day, Jamie Stratton at AIM, AIM Recovery, like all yeah. of those people looked after my body, yeah. um, especially Jamie Stratton. I was on the weekly in yeah. the probably two and a half months lead up because yeah. obviously my training ramped up well and truly. Yeah. Um, looking back, I just was, I don't, I don't know how to do it. Like right now, I definitely wouldn't commit to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those, all of those people expressed disappointment if I didn't do the right thing. Yeah. And that's what kept me going, I think. I was like, okay, I'll do some them, so don't do that again. What about this? Well, I think it's it's really easy, like, one of the things that you start to realise, I think, as you get a bit older, it's really easy to put yourself down and talk, like, yeah. talk yourself out of stuff and things mm. like that and let yourself down. But when you've got other people to hold yourself accountable to, um, then those challenges that you go, fuck, I couldn't do this by myself, become all that more achievable because you've got the support yeah. of the people around you. Yeah. Um, and I think having that really solid support network, even if you didn't necessarily do all the things that they said they would do, yeah. it's allowed you to uh, mature and mm. and understand that, okay, I was wrong, I wasn't yeah. listening and things like that and makes you a better person. Mm. And it's just part of the journey, right? Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of people in the world that are probably pissed off and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Especially if it's like, I can pretty much guarantee that 90% of you guys wouldn't want me around. Back then. Back then, yeah. Back then. Yeah. Um, and that's fair and that's a, it's a... And it is fair. It's good to be able to yeah. have have that hindsight mm. to change the way... Because that'll change the way you perceive now. Like yeah. To be able to understand that and accept that and yeah. and kind of move on. Yeah. And in return, I hope that like, everyone at Verta sort of does see me as a person now kind of thing. Yeah. And that they're willing to say, good day. Yeah. No, they weren't back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, fair enough. Don't blame them. I'll, yeah, I'll but that's but that's the cool thing. Like we have, everyone has the ability to change <clears throat> the way either you perceive yourself or the way you perceive by others. It just takes action and mm. consistency and continuity and um, and like for mine, it just takes showing up. 
like showing yeah. up and just being the person you want to be. I, I just started watching um, the new Karate Kid series. Have you heard about it? <laughs> heard about it. It's, it's fucking awesome if you see it at home. <laughs> it's, very, it's more of awesome because of the nostalgia. Yeah. Um, but I remember watching Karate Kid when I was growing up and and like didn't really understand the the metaphor or the importance of the bonsai trees. Yeah. And I was and one of the episodes I was watching yesterday um, was uh, like Daniel Daniel Sun was talking about <laughs> was talking about the bonsai trees and he's talking about like that tree is a metaphor for you because you can look at the tree and you can you can just look at the tree and not worry about anything else and kind of figure out okay this is what the tree looks like now here's what I want the tree to look like and then you've got to take the action to to change that tree and and whatever mm. that tree look can look however you want it to in the future it just takes action and discipline and, yeah. and a bit of inspiration to get there and I yeah. think that's a really cool uh, a really cool metaphor for life and for yeah. us because we all fuck up we all do shit we don't like we all let ourselves down at times and but the only person that can that is in charge or that's responsible for changing that is us Yeah, and you've been able to kind of grab that mindset by the balls more or less the last 12 months and and start changing it which is really cool that swing was probably my bonsai tree <laughs> good because it's something you can keep coming back to alright now let's talk about the swim okay so 24 hours yep what was your and I'm sure you can put yourself back into into the mindset you were in because I'm yep. sure you would have thought about it a lot since then yep the 24 hours leading up to it how, how did you feel um oh was it nerves was it excitement was it uh, fear it definitely wasn't nerves um, um, was there doubt? There was no doubt. And I think that's what I was most excited about. Good. Um, I knew that I'd miss some sessions, yep. mainly through health. Mm-hmm. Um, I had seven middle ear infections in my lead up. Like, yep. it's just ridiculous. Um, that stopped me getting in the pool. But the sessions I did do, I did not feel tired whatsoever. Good. Like, I did 12, 15K sessions and I got out so I can go again. Yeah. And I knew I was ready. Good. Yeah. Awesome. I knew I was ready going in. Standing on the standing on the blocks before it started, same feeling or yeah, I knew I was ready. I I did not have doubt. Um, yeah. I knew I would finish. Yeah, good. I knew I'd finish, and That's that awesome. that was really cool because so, I've never had something where I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna nail this." So complete opposite mindset to when you first signed up, when you were like, "I don't think I can do it." Yeah, complete, so complete. Especially with some of the session layouts and stupidity looking back they're just stupid <laughs> yeah. not through size just time time of day that I did it and yeah. having to back up in the afternoon and do more and all that kind of stuff and I don't know just looking back I was like well if I can do that and still work full time as a landscaper yeah I was like I'm ready yeah that's, I'm ready. yeah, it's that's impressive having to juggle all of the yeah all of the extra things yeah all right, talk me through the race talk me through the <laughs> like just from your yeah. like, from your point of view 24 hours worth um I nailed the plan. Yep. Nailed the nutrition. I had um, another shout out, Amy Giannotti, um, of Eating Fit up in uh, Turak. She was a huge support. So that was another thing I had to do. I went from living on junk food, one and a half liters of iced coffee a day, coke a day, um, the liquid, obviously, um, and changed that to spot on food. I was happy with what I was eating. Um, And then... The four days leading up, absolutely nailed everything that she had written down. Good. Um, two day, uh, three three days and two days out, I had to obviously carb load. Mm-hmm. Um, I had 800 grams of carbs a day, which is ginormous. Um, I had like seven or eight meals. Delicious. It, I was loving <laughs> life, just pasta and rice and chicken. and Good problem to have. Um, and I think that that's really the turning point that I actually nailed the nutrition plan leading as well because yep. that's never been good for me. Yep. Um, it's always been something you've kind of screwed out on. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Kind, of, kind of attitude. Near enough. It's, it's easier to buy than cook and it is still. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, 100%. but it's not good for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I was ready getting in the water. I felt good. Didn't feel anything in my stomach. I didn't feel ill or anything. Um, yeah, and then buzz went off and just sort of Started swimming. Yep. Just stuck to my hourly plan. I pretty much broke the 24 hours down into hourly. So each hour had a different um, food and drink to consume. Yep. And it was a four-hour rotation. So the first four hours, I'd be certain things per hour. Yep. Repeat times however many. Yep. Um, six. Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? You said how many? No, I said six. Six times four, good. Yeah. <laughs> 
good recovery. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, so I had, had about seven minutes off every hour. So in reality, I didn't swim for 24 hours. Yeah. But long enough. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. I needed to eat. So yeah, that's fair. And drink and consume and all that kind of stuff. Mate, swim on your back. Yeah, I hate swimming <laughs> on my back. Can't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, just stuck to plan of um, 3K an hour. Yep. And then at about hour eight, I reduced it down to two and a half K an hour. Yep. Um, had a bit of trouble. My toughest was probably 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. because yep. when I normally go to bed. Yep. Um, and what my body, like, my body was like, what are you doing? Yeah, my body was like, it's time to sleep. And because I, when I push off the wall, I do push off probably about six meters away. Yeah. So I'm sort of pushing off doing nothing for six meters. Yeah. And that's when I was like half nodding off. And yeah. then I'd stay my arms and wake up again. Yeah. Um, 12 p.m. hit and I was good as gold. I knew I was going to finish because I stopped thinking about how many hours to go. Like I wasn't thinking I got 20 hours to go, 19 hours to go. It sounds huge. As soon as yeah. I got to 12, I was like, okay, I'm halfway. Yeah. It sounds like nothing yeah. now. So I'm... Well, that's the important thing with anything that's endurance-based or long-term is just break like any or any goal or anything. Yeah. It's just breaking into little bits, like yeah. like whether it's like a financial goal or I want to make hundred grand this year. Cool, we'll split it into weeks and days and whatever. Yeah. Or if it's a, a lifting goal and I've got six months to get to this, or if it's a mm. distance goal, or whatever. Mm. As soon as you start breaking up into that, your body deals with it really well. Yeah. Um, or your mind deals with it really well, and you can start to go, okay, I've just got to get to this next corner or yeah. this next n- this next turn. And then the last, when did you, when did you start, you might, it might be all of it, when did you start enjoying it? Uh, poor. I enjoyed the first hour. Yeah. Um, then probably the last two hours. So in reality, it yep. wasn't that enjoyable. Yeah. But to be honest, that I don't remember, I don't remember the whole middle section. Really? I, I, well, I'm truly zoned out. Yeah. And I think that was, I'm really stoked that I did. Yeah. I just reinforce that I did there's, it for the right yeah, reason there's your reset <laughs> yeah like I, I actually did it yeah maybe so. just sleep swimming just fell asleep high chance <laughs> high chance that's, it just became so autonomous that's uh, that's really cool what was it like like finishing at a 24 hour mark yeah it was like, cool like, yeah, it was cool go back to that go back to that time and talk us through it I think the coolest part about me actually finishing is Touching, well, I didn't even touch the wall because I was swimming back. I was on my, I got a half lap. Yep. Didn't count it, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I stood up, and that was when I realised I had support. Yeah. I, up until then, I, I've always it felt like you were by yourself, like in the race or, or in the life. In, yeah. In life, yep. I, I, I know I've always sort of been the elephant in the room. Like walking into Vertus, I knew I was sort of only there to see Bice. Walking into school. No one wanted to talk to me, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I stood up and looked up and there was 35, 40 people there looking at me and clapping. Like I know, I know it was for the performance that I did, but at the same time, a lot of those people were my... But that's a reflection of your, like, I think that's a reflection of your changes in character and changes in, in what you value Mm. and what you realize was important. Um, And that, those, that mindset shift is probably reflected upon that feeling of support that you had yeah definitely and the friends that I made along the way for the campaign um, and putting together fundraisers and stuff like that I've made lifelong friends yeah which is really really cool awesome and even coming up to um, like through this period at the moment because it's one year from now those all those memory things yeah just seeing those campaigns pop up and them sharing it saying this is one of the most proud of my life and all that kind of stuff he's like very cool they didn't even do it but they're, they're proud of being a part of it and that's yeah. awesome yeah so, it's amazing. Yeah, really cool. But I, I, I like to think I inspire people on the way, which was really cool. You definitely did. Definitely. Yeah. And it's it's nice to be able to, to, for you to look back and look at it as an achievement and look at how many people's lives you impacted. And yeah. How many laps did you swim? Um, I think about 2,400 laps. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> it's 60.5K. That's insane. Yeah, that's, that's very impressive. It's really cool. How much money did, did you raise? Um, I ticked over 20,000. That's incredible. Yeah. So I think it was 20,000, 80 bucks or something. Good feeling? Yeah, it was really cool. I didn't get my goal, but yeah. did not care. Yeah. Um, I would have been stuck with 10 grand. Yeah. Because 10 grand is a lot of money. Yeah. But the fact I raised 20 grand, and that was more so in the last probably three months. And the biggest spike was um, besides fundraisers, because obviously that's a big, big chunk of money going in. Yeah. 
the biggest spike was the fact that one of my mates was there the entire time, Tom Bowman. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was there the entire thing. Didn't go to sleep either. That's he, awesome. he counted that for me because we didn't need a lap counter. Yeah. Um, but he was doing live feeds onto Facebook and tagging me. And That's cool. I think I raised like two and a half thousand just, just, just in that 20 hours. like, yeah. oh, fuck, he's actually done it. Well, that's, that's the time, I think, where... It's real. People yeah, get to feel see like, it. Not people, people feel like they're a part of it, and yeah. they're actually able to support you. Yeah. Then. So it was. It was just cool that they're they're the people I reckon with the doubters. Yeah. In reality, and it's cool that they're like, "He's done it. Here's some money. Awesome. I don't like it, but here's some money." <laughs> so it's very it, cool. It was just cool. It's yeah. good because it's it's kind of like you've kind of got two two narratives running alongside each other. Um, with you preparing, uh, preparing and then completing this challenge like you've got the narrative of you trying to do something for people that aren't going to do anything for you and you're going to do something for like this community of people uh, and raise money for them and at the same time you're doing it like for that reason of figuring out who you are and what you want yeah. and, and where you're at and yeah it's cool to see those two narratives go alongside each other and be there to support each other and, mm. and to create that result that um, I, I assume you're fairly proud of. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud. Good, you should be. There's not many things that I'm actually genuinely proud of in my life and yeah. that's one of them. That's going to be up there probably for the rest of my life. Awesome. That's amazing. Would you do it again? Um, I considered it because I... It's going to sound stupid. I didn't swim as far as I wanted. <laughs> so I fell 4K short of a goal. Yep. Yep. So what was your goal? 64? 64 and a half, yeah. 64 and a half, yeah. So, because I would have broken the 50 meter record, but in reality, I got the 25 meter record because I didn't do a 25 meter pool. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, same, same. If I did it again, it'd be a 50, but I hate 50s. So, would it, yeah, so would it be easier or harder? Um, easier in the sense of less turns, yeah. harder in the sense of mental strength. Yeah. Because 50 meters feels like 100 meters. Mm -hmm. Whereas 25, it's just breaking all the time. 20 hours in, it'll feel like a thousand oh, meters. Yeah, yeah. 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 It won that count like twenty five meters felt like a thousand meters when I was near the end. Yeah. But at the same time my last hour I was swimming the same pace I was in my first first lap. That's impressive. So I was pretty happy. That's very, very cool. And that's just reinforcement I did do the training. What was the uh what was the come down after the event like? Um I didn't really have one. I just went back to work. I had the Monday off and went yeah. back to work Tuesday and just <laughs> carried on. Like yeah. the worst effect that I had was the chlorine burn. Yeah. Well, I was just, I've got scars from swimming. Yeah. So just because it was in the chlorine for so long. And that's designed to kill shit. So <laughs> it definitely killed my skin. Yeah, that's fair. But that's fair. I don't know, just mosey on. Yeah, just kept rolling. Well, yeah. How did your training change after after you finished the, the um, race? I had uh, two or three weeks off. I've only swum probably 3K since then. Yeah. Um, but I don't need to swim, so I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I went, went to rock climbing for a bit. Yep. Um, <laughs> Just bouldering at Bayside Rock, which yep. was wicked place. Well, that's fun. Um, just to, I don't know, keep moving. And yeah, then ended up destroying my back, so I've done not too much. Yeah, yeah. So how's, <clears throat> let's look at how you're dealing with that that back injury and, and how you're dealing with the rehab and the process now compared to how you would have dealt with it 18 months ago. Well, I'm dealing with it. I think that's, I think <laughs> yeah. that's the biggest difference. Yeah. Back then, I would have thrown in the towel and just dealt so, with it in a way that, is an improvement. Mm -hmm. Now I'm actually, and that's where I think that swim has hugely helped me, that things do improve if you just take your time and all that kind of stuff. And that's where Greg and I's relationship has definitely improved, I think. Yeah. Because he would have been in the same boat as you yeah. back then. Yeah. He, I think you can see you putting in the work and, yeah. and improving. And, yeah. Um, and I think that's something that <clears throat> Greg and I have had a, really few, a few really good chats about, not you in particular, but just that client coach or client practitioner relationship where where the expectations are laid out from the start and, and respected from both sides mm. like I think it's for any athlete that's injured or and coming back to rehab or any athletes that's trying to achieve something they haven't achieved before need to have faith in the process mm. um, and have faith in the time it takes to actually work through that process yeah. and not try and rush it and not try and skip skip steps and and things like that. Um, like for an example, there's a an ACL there's an ACL uh, kind of checklist, right? To get people back from an ACL injury reconstruction back to sport in 21 weeks. Mm. Um, there's a checklist that if 
and there's research to back this up. Um, I can't remember where the guys are in in the US. Greg shared that. Yeah, Greg 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 would have shared it, and I can if anyone wants it, shoot me an email or um, comment on one of these. Uh, post and I'll find it for you but it was basically 21 weeks here back to an ACL with a something like a 0% re- 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 yeah. recurrence rate which is awesome. if you tick all those boxes mm. um, which is insane like it's with the ACL epidemic like hitting junior sport and yeah. senior sport and amateur sport in Australia especially and like the rest of the world it's it shows the importance of ticking the boxes and following the process and actually doing the things you need to do and listening to the professionals because you know I um if I need advice on on say how to fix a TV or how to fix a car or something I'll go to the person that does that right but training and nutrition because there's something that everyone does everyone kind of thinks they know better and you definitely did and now you now you understand the importance of putting your faith in in people like Greg um, so it's impressive and I like when people say it so that helps um, it just makes you feel a little bit better yeah yeah and when like it, when you put in like Greg's got your back now yeah like, so yeah for sure it makes you feel like you've got that support because you do hmm. um, which is really really important talk me through <clears throat> talk me through your your dive back into your music hmm um well, I was never in music in reality. I yeah. played for sixteen years. I played since I was nine. That's in music, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, half-assed. Yeah, half-assed. So sixteen years, half-assed. Yeah. So I started when I was nine in primary yeah. school. Um, I played a few different instruments since then. Always been brass. Um, and when I did my back, I felt myself spiraling again. Yeah. I. I had two months of not seeing anyone about my back. Yep. I kept soldering off for work. Yeah. Um, would go home, tear up a little bit, go to bed. Yeah. That's, that's all I could really do. Yeah. Um, it's needed to work. We all do. Um, mm-hmm. And I found myself spiraling. And the only thing I could do was play music. Yeah. But I found it really difficult to get past it because I got slammed so hard for it at school. Yeah. Um, I got bullied in general, let alone playing a brass instrument. Like yep. it's just not cool. Um, but it is cool. Yeah. So I really don't care now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I started rehabbing with my back, yeah. I decided, well, I can't train. Simple as that. There's nothing I can really do because of what I've done. Um, unfortunately, I can't use my core, can't do anything. So most sports are pretty much out. Yeah. Even swimming because I couldn't yeah, hold myself yeah, up swimming. Wasn't a lot you could do. Yeah. Couldn't really do my legs. Yeah. Um, and decided to get the fuck over it. Get, get over my fear um, and the biggest step I did for that was posting yeah on Facebook so you put your put a video of you playing up uh, no what was I, the first thing you did the first thing I did was post a photo um, I went to one of my my good little places that I go to just sort of sit and chill so I guess it is sort of a form of meditation yeah um, I go there and watch the beach yeah and it's in the woods nobody can really hear you yeah because you're up on a hill and the beach is down there and so I just have a play there awesome just to that was the kickstart of me actually practicing because I've never practiced in my life yeah until this yeah so you never really practiced unless you were in a lesson or had yeah well, I had I had band on, on yeah. Tuesday every every week and yeah that was the time you played that was the time I played yeah um and I guess after 16 years you, you can do that because that's enough yeah. lessons as such yeah um but yeah decided to get get an instrument out and actually just out with play and I was like fuck it take a photo um, it's a cool backdrop yeah me playing in the woods yeah it's pretty cool post it get over it yep. and I did and the response is what inspired me yeah talk me through the response and, and then your I guess progress from that that point in time the response was just only positive there was love reacts there was likes all that kind of shit yeah just that alone made me feel good um Nothing like a hit of dopamine from Instagram. From yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the comments of common ground mm. that there's other people in the world that have got slammed because of it, yeah. but they don't care. Yeah, that's very They cool. did, but they don't anymore. And that sort of inspired me. It's like, you know what? They, they are right. Yeah. I don't know what my problem with it is. I'm mm. sure some people don't think playing brass is cool, but I like it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I don't care. You do you, mate. Yeah, um, and that sort of sparked me to practice more yeah ended up joining a second band so I play with Franklin City Brass now 
Um, they needed a corner player, so I ended up jumping from tenor because they had enough tenor horns. Yeah. Went to corner and then started on third corner and now all of a sudden I'm head chair corner. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Awesome. So we're playing solos at the Steadfords and shit like that. Oh, nice, man. Um, and that inspired me to practice every day. Very cool. So I, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Yeah. I'll leave it out of my case on top of the piano. Every time I walk past, I'll just have a quick stuff around on it. Um, but that's something. And yeah. then I was starting to struggle a little bit with doing rehab. So I ended up having a having a catch up with a mate, you'd know him, Steve. Um, Roberts. Forgot his last name. He'll be on next week. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, awesome. in a couple of weeks. Yeah, cool. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Steve, I had had um practice with him and he's like, Well, every time you walk past your instrument you play, yeah? He's yeah. like, Yeah, he's like, Cool, do your rehab as well. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Yeah, good. True. That's it. Like if it's in front of your face, you can't yeah. really ignore it. So every time I go and play, I was like, oh, I've got to do my rehab. So I have yeah. a play, go on the ground, do my it's rehab. Very good advice. Keep moving on. Mm. So I think it was just the trigger to remind me because it's not front of mind. You're not, not not just thinking all day. I should do my rehab. I should that's do my the, rehab. And that's the interesting thing we find with people with their rehab and pain and things like that is <clears throat> we find like talking about the seeing it through to the end and finishing your rehab and f- trusting the process. We see such a drop off with people from. Um, the I'm in pain to the I'm not in pain and then that as soon as they hit that I'm not in pain they think oh I can return to sport or I can turn to li- return to life massive or whatever be, but they miss that period of getting them back to the point where they're yeah. actually functional in that sport or yeah. they're actually able to do it without pain or they're able to do it without increasing the risk of of another injury and mm. you know we know the biggest risk of um, of a recurring injury is having the first injury like yeah. so if you see it out and follow it through then those risk factors drop significantly um, and that's why people re-injure themselves yeah. because they stop early but yeah. this obviously allows you to keep yeah, rolling and keep, keep doing it and just tick the box yeah. up tick the box daily yeah yeah exactly awesome mate awesome what <clears throat> what advice would you have for for future jo- oh, for future Josh for past Josh so what I tell my past self? Yeah. Give me like, give me 17, 18 year old self. Take the back seat. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's huge for me, I think. Because yeah. um, taking the back seat, you're still in the car, there's still someone driving, you're still going to end up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need to drive if you don't know where you're going. So that's sort of how I base a lot of what I do now. Okay. If I don't know where I'm going, I'm yeah. taking the back seat and yeah. letting someone else guide me that way yeah. next time I'll drive and just go with the flow yeah and yeah because then, then everything that happens is organic I think yeah exactly and when you and it's when it's exciting you when someone else is driving <laughs> you don't know <laughs> you what's know, coming up yeah yeah definitely definitely and you see a lot more when you're not driving yeah because you don't have tunnel vision just looking at the one thing exactly right that's really interesting I think I know the answer to this question but have you had a defining moment in my life yeah um, probably two my swim and my back injury yeah yeah the, those two things are the main things that have taught me to take the back seat yeah. yeah apart from the swim what are you most proud of Whoa. what makes you think the swim's my, my proudest moment because you said it before <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been listening I must say that Probably never, never missed an opportunity with moving forward with a career. Yeah, I think that's. I've never had a fear of leaving a company if something not necessarily better pops up, but everybody's like, "Oh, why have you had five jobs in six years?" Yeah, but those five jobs, I've stayed in for a minimum of a year to get the experience for those jobs. Yeah, and I see them as stepping stones. Yeah. 100%. So everything I've done up until the job I'm in now, which I'll be for a long time, there's not much that would be offered to me that I'd be like, sweet. That's cool. Um, have led to this job, I think. Yeah, that's really interesting because I think a lot of people see that change or that um, step sideways as a step backwards, whereas it's just it's just not. No. Like you're... I was having this conversation with KP last night and she's not sure if she wants to be a teacher forever. Um, and... 
my advice is just to trust. Okay, cool. You don't want, you don't love what you're doing right now. Let's try something else. Well, let's try something else. Like take three steps side, sideways and you might figure exactly. it out. And she's like, but what if I, like, it's taking me 25 years to get to here. What if it takes me 25 years to figure it out? I'm like, cool. You get to 50 and you've got another 50 years to, mm. to enjoy yourself and yeah. be doing what you love. Like, the biggest thing is, is what it is. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And we can't. And if we put that time pressure or that um, that pressure on ourselves to figure it all out, mm. we're never going to figure it all out. Yeah. And I think that ability to look at your progress as just that, as progress, yeah. is incredibly important, incredibly powerful. Mm. Um, and but, but like when I left real estate, that was for my mental happiness kind of thing. Yeah. Um, People thought I was crazy getting into real estate. Yeah. Even like dad was like, no, I don't, because yeah. you're making good money. I was like, good money. Yes. Yeah. And I, I did take a hundred steps back. I went to a labourer. Yeah. I've been a labourer before. I went back to a labourer. Yeah. But that reminded me that trade isn't what I want to do. Yeah. Um, especially labouring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no offense to labourers. Yeah. Fucking good on you, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but it reminded me that sales is sort of where I want to be, and. I yeah. complained to a couple of people that I'm only in 20 bucks an hour and I complained to the right people and opportunity arose and went through the process got the job and could be happier awesome mate so taking a step backs definitely work sometimes yeah even yeah. if you don't know but you don't have to look at it as a step back it's not exactly. a step back it's just a change yeah it's a step taking the back seat yeah kind of definitely <clears throat> if you could be remembered in one sentence what would it be um The only person... Well, that's a hard one. Didn't say um, that'd be easy, mate. Yeah, The true. next one's an easy one. Next one's an easy one. Um, possibly an inspiration that change is achievable. Nice. I like that. It's good. Because yeah. I was definitely set in my ways. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So now you're a little bit more fluid in your thinking. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Give me a favorite fun fact. Favorite fun fact. The there's your, there's the, your easy question. But penguins have knees. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's creepy. That's yeah. weird to think about. Yeah. Shit. But penguins have knees. They're inside them. <laughs> that's so gnarly. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, if, uh, if you're playing at home, please Google anatomy of a penguin. 100%. <laughs> it's weird as shit. I'm not going to do it. It'd be creepy. <laughs> if money wasn't an issue and you couldn't fail, what would you do with your life? Um, it's really probably corny and cheesy corny's fine but explore every peak and trough of the world nice because there's cool shit at the bottom there's cool shit at the top yeah I like it yeah I like it on that note if you could travel anywhere in the world where would it be and why does that have to be one because I've got three locations no, I've, I've never travelled Never. I've been around Australia. So well, never been, spots. Never, never been, been out of Australia. Okay, cool. Cool. Never been overseas. But I'd like to start with either New Zealand, Japan, or Vancouver. Cool. Um, all three in both seasons. So awesome. I want to go mountain bike riding and I want to go snowboarding. Awesome. In Amazing. all three. That's cool. I've done Japan, I've done New Zealand. They're both incredible. Yeah. yeah. Would, um, and it's just 100% my jam. Is there a reason why you haven't travelled? Yeah, young, dumb, and stupid with money. Yeah. Here's the yeah, matter. So you've just had to yeah. save. Yeah. Yeah. So my opportunity of saving is only come now because I had to clear all my debt. Yeah. So my mm-hmm. saving was getting back to square zero. Yeah. So when's your first trip? Uh, I'm going to New Zealand next year. Awesome. My work is tough because you've only got a small window of opportunity for travel and yeah. it's the middle of winter. Yeah. Um, being in the pool industry is like through summer. Don't yeah. even think about taking <laughs> taking an hour off. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, ho- hopefully June or July next year I'd like to go to New Zealand. I think that's my first port of call. I like it. Because it's my, my backyard, really. Yeah, it'll be very cool. Awesome. Do you have a morning routine? Pardon? Do you have a morning routine? Yeah. What is Set it? my alarm for 10 minutes before I leave, get up and leave. <laughs> Good. Crisp. Yeah. Easy, simple. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. What is success to you? Um, being content. I think that's something I'm finally finding. Yeah. Things might go wrong, but I'm still content. Good. Because they're all sort of just mini experiences in themselves. Oh. Yeah, I think being content. Have you looked into stoicism? No. I've got some books for you. I don't read. I've got some audio books for you. Amazing. 
I've got some apps for you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go. I won't dive down down to that rabbit hole. Um, the question I asked before: What are you what are you proud of? Yeah. Flip side of that: What are you ashamed of? Um, my attitude. Your my past attitude. attitude. Yeah. 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 Yeah, my past attitude that I did cause so much conflict. Yeah. Yeah, with myself, with others. Um, quite often I was the centre of chaos. In reality. Yeah. It is what it is. I, like, yes, I'm ashamed of it, but it created but you now, from it. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know. It's just part of the process, I guess. Yeah, so I guess it's not a disappointment. Sure, I'm ashamed, but it's not a disappointment. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Second last question. Do you have a hero? Who do you look up to and why? reason I ask it two parties because it doesn't have to be one person. Hmm. Two years ago, probably not. Yeah. Now, my dad's definitely one. Awesome. Because what he's created is pretty cool. Pretty cool. And, he, yeah. and he's done it essentially solo. Um, he's looked after a family really well. Yeah. Might not have spoken to us on a deep level but yep. he looked after us yeah um, I feel like there is other people in my world that are mentors and I don't know people I appreciate yeah um, I don't think I have a hero though that's alright alright well I'll, uh, <coughs> I'll tweet this question or I'll change the question a little bit if you could invite three people to dinner who would they be and why um That's a good question. <laughs> Without sounding like I'm, I want to marry him, probably Greg, to be honest. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's got a really nice way of looking at things. Yeah. He's cool, calm, collected. Yeah. And he, he's a big, big fan of little wins. Yeah. And that's yeah. all I've done for my past probably 12 months. Just enjoy the little wins. Just ride in the back of little wins and hope, hope to create it a big win. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite thing about Greg is just his integrity. He just he, know, he knows who he is. He knows what he what he yeah. expects and and what he mm. um, what he can what he will deal with from others. And if you won't if you don't fit into that, then yeah. And without opening okay. a can of worms about him, it's in for him to talk about. But he's experienced similar things to me. Yeah, and he, yeah. we relate well. I yeah, think. we talked about it a little bit on his podcast. It was really interesting. Yeah. Podcast number four, if you are, if you haven't listened to it, and that was a guess. It was early. I think it was four. <laughs> Who are the two other people? Give me two more. It's a really hard question. <laughs> Why don't you read, by the way? It, I just skipped over that. I, I know why. I've only recently even told my boss. Yeah. Because he didn't really understand why I struggled so much. Um. I struggle to comprehend. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's probably some form of dyslexia. Yeah. Um, I can write really well. I can read really well. Yeah. Um, and I can retain information really well. Yeah. But if I'm reading the information, I won't retain it. Okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. Audiobooks and podcasts, baby. Load yeah, up. 100%. Yeah. So, good. And I'll listen to plenty of podcasts and educational stuff, but I'm the kind of guy that you would need, for example, at the moment, we're learning about how you to work. Yeah. Because unfortunately, they, they get in track, <laughs> which sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But there's, they just give me a, a whole whole brochure thing of just a whole bunch of random shit I don't care about. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I said, I, uh, I can't read I'm this. Not read yeah. it. So we're getting a heat pump in. We're going to pull it apart and put it back together, and I'll know exactly all about it. That's a good way to do it. That's awesome. It's inter- it's important to understand how you learn as well. Yeah, we exactly. Learn a little bit differently. Yeah. Last question for you. You knew this one was coming, so you should have a good answer. What's your favourite quote? Uh, I'm going to read it for, oh of course it, no damn I'm going to read it off uh, my Instagram <laughs> now I'm going to refund it it sucks come on shut up I know it's here somewhere just calm down sometimes walking away has nothing to do with weakness and everything to do with strength Good, I like it. On that note, mate, thank you for coming on. Absolute pleasure. Good from you. It's been good. How can people uh, find you on the social medias and the Instagrams and, and things uh, like that? Search my name. 
Facebook's just Joshua Kaiser and Insta's, I think it's Joshua J. Kaiser, all one word. Beautiful, mate. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it.